Recently, the African Union endorsed Mr. Ted Rose at Hanno nomination for the 2017 post of Director General of the World Health Organization. Mr. Ted Rose at Hanno served as Health Minister for seven years from 2005 to 2012 and from 2012 to 2016 as a Foreign Minister. In his tenure as Ministry of Health, Mr. Adhanom has shown nothing but gross incompetency. This has been reflected in his mismanagement and failure to contain various disease outbreaks and crises some of which were done deliberately. He used health and aid policies to implement his party's political motivated sinister agendas against Ethiopians. In his time as a foreign minister, his lack of action in expatriating citizens has been disastrous and has led to the deaths of hundreds of Ethiopians being killed in foreign lands. When individuals are nominated for such a respectable position, a rigorous background check and vetting should be implemented. Mr. Ted Rose at Hanome is not eligible for the WHO position based on his gross incompetency, politics, and corruption. To understand and give the people a full spectrum on his credentials, it will be vital to largely scrutinize his time as a health minister and foreign minister. In 2006 there was cholera outbreak. According to a research entitled Investigation of a Cholera Outbreak in Ethiopia's Oromia region, it states, Ethiopia's Oromia region was affected by an outbreak of acute watery diarrhea, subsequently confirmed to be caused by Vibrio cholera 1, a pathogen not known to be endemic to this area. Despite initial control efforts, the outbreak quickly spread to neighboring zones and regions. The research concluded by stating, future epidemics will undoubtedly occur unless basic water and sanitation deficiencies are properly addressed. This outbreak prompts the need for increased local public health capacity to apply prevention strategies and establish ongoing surveillance. Signatories to the World Health Organization International Health Regulations must report outbreaks of non-endemic diseases. Dr. Amy Q. Werner, who was the field officer for the WHO published a field report entitled, Report on the Field Visit to Provide Technical Support in Emergency Preparedness and Response to Amhara Regional State. In the report she states, this year Amhara region has also experienced acute watery diarrhea outbreak that is going on in Ethiopia. Currently 27 districts out of 138 have been affected in six zones of the region. To date 200 deaths and 11,974 cases were reported from affected districts CFR 1.67%. The coverage of safe drinking water supply is 40% in Amhara region and the latrines coverage is 35%. The coverage is almost nil in rural areas for both safe drinking water supply and sanitation facilities. In rural areas water from rivers or unprotected springs is widely used for drinking and for other needs. In the same year, a review of data quality was conducted focusing 109 health facilities showed major problems in data quality. Of the facilities only half had archival procedures that permitted comparison of registers and compiled reports for new consultations. Comparison of immunization records was only possible in one third of facilities. Among those that could be compared there were major discrepancies in the majority of cases. Problems were also found in the use of population denominators for coverage estimates and targeting, disease reporting with an excessive 12 age sex categories, and completeness and timeliness of reporting. The cholera persisted in 2007 unabated and this was primarily due to lack of leadership. The Guardian in its article entitled, Fatal Outbreak Not a Cholo Epidemic, insists Ethiopia, it stated, Ethiopia is refusing to declare a suspected outbreak of an epidemic despite the deaths of 684 people and infection of nearly 60,000 others in less than a year. 
Fearful of affecting revenue from food exports and tourism, the government is insisting that the disease is acute watery diarrhea, a symptom of cholera, and maintains it is under control. The Associated Press confirms the outbreak, and the government's reluctance to declare a state of emergency. The AP states, more than 680 people have died in a suspected cholera outbreak in Ethiopia that has also affected neighboring countries, officials said Wednesday. Some 60,000 people have been infected, but the country's health ministry is resisting pressure to declare an emergency despite a UN warning that the disease is an epidemic. The fact that it is spreading to new areas in the country is cause for serious concern, said Paul Hubbard, head of the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Ethiopia. The full extent of this needs to be addressed. The UN has not officially declared the outbreak which began nearly a year ago, to be cholera. But UN officials speaking privately because of the sensitivity of the issue are saying it is cholera, something local officials continue to deny. Mr. Adham Om lacked responsiveness as a health minister. He failed to discharge his obligations by dismissing communicable outbreaks as minor issues to protect the financial interest of the government. In 2007, Samir Zakaria, who was the Director General of the Central Statistical Agency in Ethiopia, made a shocking revelation in her presentation in Parliament regarding the Population Census Report. In the report, she stated that two million ethnic Amharas were missing from the population and that nor she or the agency could explain the cause. She also stated that while looking at the raw data, she was able to find a systematic reduction. While every major ethnic group had exponential growth of population and met their respective projection, the Amhara people were the only ethnic group that had an anomalous deficit of 2 million people. The director further went on to add that the agency had carried out several thorough recounts. However, the results remained unchanged. In the end, the agency brought a statistics expert from the United States, who was a Harvard University graduate, to review and investigate the number of the agency, and he concluded that there were no errors in the methodology of the statistic itself. However, he could not expound on why two million Amharas were missing from the population. Later on, a committee was assigned to investigate the cause for the reduction, and it concluded that the reduction in population was largely related due to the high prevalence of HIV AIDS which has resulted in the death of many Amharas. The Demographic and Health Survey DHS, which is a USAID initiative program, made its own conclusion that in addition to HIV AIDS deaths, there was a high infant mortality rate among the Amhara people not seen anywhere in the country, and that was the cause for the Amhara population reduction. Furthermore, like Amhara Jews in Israel, Amhara women in Ethiopia have been forcibly sterilized by the Tigray government. The women never consented nor did they have knowledge that they were being sterilized. This is evident in the various health reports done on Amhara women where it clearly confirms that Amhara women are thought to have the highest percentage of adopting quote-unquote contraception methods. Many Amharas believe they are viewed as enemies of the state due to the various policies instituted against them by the government. This view emanates from the fact that Tigray government's own manifesto document explicitly declares that the Amhara people are the number one enemy of the Tigray people, and therefore, need to be eradicated. The regime's anti-Amhara policy is instituted in various sectors and departments of the government, and the health ministry is just one of the many. The facts and evidence presented by various organizations implicate the health ministry as having a devious role in the reduction of two million Amharas. Be it through its deliberate sterilization efforts or its negligence of diseases amongst the Amhara people, the facts clearly reflect government's unequivocal, anti-Amhara agenda. The individual that was leading and overseeing the policy of the health ministry at the time was none other than Mr. Tedros at Hanome. Mr. Adhanom comes from the Tigray ethnic group, and is a high-ranking official within the Tigray party. Many Amharas in the diaspora are currently working to bring a case against Mr. Adhanom for genocide. In 
July of 2008, the WHO released a press release stating, Worsening malnutrition and the threat of disease outbreaks are compounding Ethiopia's humanitarian crisis. WHO is working with the government of Ethiopia and health partners to support the 4.6 million people needing urgent emergency food relief nationwide. The press release further goes on to say, the number of people who need food assistance is increasing noticeably in Ethiopia. Health risks are being compounded by the global food security crisis, the impact of drought on agricultural production in the country's weak health system. During the coming months, Annual rains are expected to again cause large-scale flooding, increasing loss of crops, and risk of disease. The WHO's press release is further confirmed, in a research entitled, Why Was There Still Malnutrition in Ethiopia in 2008? Causes and Humanitarian Accountability, the author, Alvaro Melodo Dominguez, states the government has a weak preventive safety net system and malfunctioning early warning system have been unable to protect the most vulnerable sector of the population from starvation. Through this process of examining these issues, it has been noticed that the affected population has no voice with which to influence and demand changes. They remained excluded and disempowered from the decision process and are thus unable to react to difficult socio-economic contexts such as the one in 2008. Starvation will remain present in the coming years if its prevention is not at the top of the agenda of all relevant actors including government, international humanitarian agencies and donors, and if accountability is not guaranteed and the population continues to be excluded from decision making. In the same year, the WHO released a study, and stated, the incidence of HIV leishmania co-infection was 23% in 2008, far higher than anywhere else in the world. The real burden is likely to be higher, as only 17% of VL cases are screened for HIV in some facilities. The affected populations are mainly very poor male seasonal migrant workers that travel in the harvesting season from non-endemic highlands to the cotton, sesame, and sorghum fields of Hamira and Timi on the Sudanese border. The WHO goes on further and states, patients are often too poor to pay for this and also suffer major economic loss when spending time away from home. Many patients live in very remote areas with no health facilities and no transport, or they cannot afford transport if available. There is also a lack of awareness of the disease. According to a document seen by Reuters, cholera and other diarrheal diseases have infected 18,000 people in Ethiopia over the last three weeks in many parts of the country, including the capital Addis Ababa. The document, minutes of a meeting attended by international health charities and UN agencies last Tuesday, said half of moderate to severe cases of the 18,000 infections were cholera. It did not say how many were moderate to severe. According to WHO report, acute watery diarrhea outbreak reports received from SNNPR and Oromir indicate an increasing number of cases as well as expansion of the outbreak to new districts. No exact official figures have been obtained from the Ministry of Health yet. Immediate response needs include drugs and medical supplies. The WHO, in its emergency and humanitarian action report stated, an upsurge of malaria cases is reported in SNNP, Amhara and Oromia regions, but the actual figures remain indeterminate. Gaps include, inadequate availability of antimalarial and rapid diagnostic tests, shortage of insecticide-treated bed nets, those available have already passed their lifespan, shortage of spraying equipment, shortage of operational funds, Difficult access to information on the current status of malaria. Absence of malaria focal points to coordinate the response at regional and district levels. According to a WHO research entitled Strengthening and Monitoring Evaluation Practices in the Context of Scaling Up the International Health Partnership and Country Health Systems Surveillance, it concluded that there were major problems with the health system surveillance. Data Sources 
There are multiple data gaps in the availability and quality of health statistics which must be addressed to implement the accountability and results framework. There is a need to increase data access and transparency to allow regular assessment of data quality. Institutional capacity is weak, and more systematic investments of partners and government are needed. Health data control systems, stated, at present, there is no system of assessing data quality and making adjustments. For instance, there are no data on completeness, timeliness and accuracy of reporting, or adjustments made to health facility-based coverage estimates based on population-based surveys. In 2010, Office of the Inspector General OIG, carried an investigation audit in the implementation and expenditure of the Global Fund grants given to countries. OIG stated, the purpose of this audit was to provide assurance that Global Fund resources have been spent wisely to save life in Ethiopia. The Global Fund was part of an initiative to fight AIDS, TB, and malaria. The investigation of inadequacy is an internal audit. For HIV AIDS Prevention and Control Office HAPCO, the OIG noted that the internal audit function lacked organizational independence, as well as a system to ensure appropriate remedial actions are taken in response to audit recommendations. Ineligible expenditure. The OIG noted that HAPCO had charged a total of six million American dollars of ineligible expenses to the grant programs, which included 4.7 million American dollars of VAT on payments for the construction of health centers. Substandard construction due to diverted funds. 71% of the sites visited did not have access to water. 32% did not have functioning toilet facilities. 53% had major cracks in the floors. And 19% had leaking roofs. Long outstanding advances. For both the Federal Ministry of Health FMOH and HAPCO, the OIG noted instances where advances were outstanding for long periods. For example, an advance of $6.3 million by HAPCO to Pharmaceutical Fund and Supply Agency in April 2009 was still outstanding in November 2010. The OIG recommended timelier monitoring and follows up of outstanding advances and refund to the Global Fund of 5.5 million American dollars related to expired grants. Weaknesses in accounting systems at the FMOH. The FMOH's financial records for the grants were maintained using Excel spreadsheets instead of a suitable accounting software package. Also key reconciliations relating to cash and bank, and program disbursements were not regularly prepared and reviewed. In its conclusion the OIG stated, a total of $165,393,027 was spent on health center construction, resulting in over-expenditure of $57,851,941 or 54% against the approved budget for health facility renovation. There was inadequate control in place to assure quality and effective use of the constructed health facilities. It has, therefore, demanded for a refund of $7,026,929. The OIG did an audit of USAID and Ethiopia's HIV care and treatment activities and it found out the following, internal controls did not prevent or detect ineligible costs. Data for food by prescription were not reliable. Commodity storage conditions were not good, and inventory was poorly documented. Tetratech activities were outside scope of work. And construction activities did little to improve universal access, according to a Human Rights Watch report entitled, Development Without Freedom, How Aid Under Rights Repression in Ethiopia, it states, Human Rights Watch documented patterns of discrimination and politicization of aid that took a number of forms. Partisan distribution of agricultural inputs. Partisan access to microcredit facilities. Partisan access to the Productive Safety Net Program. Use of state educational facilities for political purposes. Political indoctrination of school students. 
political repression of teachers, use of the business process re-engineering program as a means of purging individuals who fail to support the ruling party. The report further goes on to say, our findings suggest that the politicization of fertilizer, the safety net program, microcredit, training and promotion of teachers and other civil servants, university entrance, and high school students restricts the ability of citizens to exercise their basic rights to freely associate, assemble, express themselves, and hold political beliefs. The consequences of these cases reverberate beyond the individual hardship endured by the affected individuals. Only one farmer needs to be denied seeds or one mother denied a safety net placement for the chilling message to reach the whole village, dissent carries a heavy price. Even where instances of individual persecution or discrimination may be few. The effect on all Ethiopians is wide and significant for the human rights situation throughout the country. Leslie Lefko, who is a senior Horn of Africa researcher for Human Rights Watch, in her article entitled, Ethiopia, Aid is a Weapon, she states, in recent years, government has carried out a meticulous campaign of intimidation, harassment and abuse that has managed to silence most of the government's independent opposition. Foreign aid has become one of the government's most effective tools in suppressing and punishing criticism. Human Rights Watch's research found that local officials often deny assistance to people they perceive as political opponents, including many who are not actually involved in politics at all. Impoverished farmers know they risk losing access to aid which their livelihoods depend on if they speak out against abuses in their communities. Most respond by staying quiet. Aid discrimination has made freedom of speech a luxury many Ethiopians quite literally cannot afford.